Welcome to the module on a flexible payment. Today we will be discussing about uh, the approach lab uh, settlements. Uh, what is an approach lab and why do they settle irrespective of the fact whether it is a ordinary road or a major district road or a national highway even if it is a expressive projects. So what is an approach slab? An approach slab provides a transition between the roadway pavements and the bridge. This uh, generally gives uh, a filling uh, between uh, the bridge part and the road which is connecting towards the to the bridges. Approach slab acts as an intermediate bridge to span the portion of the embankment directly behind the abutment or the back wall which was excavated to construct the abutment or the back walls. For example, if you see the photographs like on the left hand side, you can see the face which is a structure, maybe it's a PUP or VUP or a bridge structure showing one end of the structure and on the right hand side, the line which is being demarcated with an orange line shows that when the road is being constructed, it has been constructed up to the right uh, orange line initially along with the main carriageway and then this gap which is being demarcated with the orange line is being filled up after the completion of the bridge. So this is the portion which is actually a, a intermediate span which is getting filled up uh, after the completion of the bridge. Then uh, to construct the approach slab, you need to have a PCC on uh, the gap uh, between the bridge face, the back of the abutment wall or the back wall and the existing uh, road. And then this will be uh, covered with a RCC slab of uh, say 300 millimeters thick and uh, maybe around 3 meters or 3.5 meters in length along the line of uh, cross section of the road pavement. So this is uh, the slab which is generally known as the approach slab which is acting as an intermediate bridge or uh, covering the span between the existing structure and the roadway which is meeting or approaching the structure for completing the project. Now the different types of approach slab settlements if you see the bridge approaches typically experiences two types of settlements. One is the global settlement and the second is the local settlement. When we say about the global settlement, global settlement is generally uh, being done because of the consolidation of the underlying uh, natural foundation soils or evidence of a possible long-term differential settlement between the bridge structure and the bridge embankment filled soil which is being filled up to come up to the top of uh, the road cross sections. Local settlement is compression of fill materials directly beneath the approach uh, pavement. Maybe uh, it will look like something like this where you have filled up the soil but because of the lack of uh, compaction or uh, the initial consolidation of the soil, the compression, initial compression of the soil, the settlement, the, a gap is created between the bottom of the approach slab and the top of the soil which is being consolidated within the area within the area which is just below the approach slab or evidence of a possible embankment consolidation within the upper 10 to 20 feet of the bridge embankments. So this will create a bump. So how the bump is created because the combination of global and local settlements adjacent to the bridge ends piers forms the characteristic uh, bump in the pavement at the bridge ends uh, which is approaching through the along the length of the road. So this will have an impact or a sudden jerk uh, when you approach the bridge. It can be a minor bridge, it can be a major bridge, it can be a, any structure which is uh, crossing the existing road as shown in the figure. So when there will be a hump that means the surface which is uh, just touching the structural part, you can see that there is a settlement scene and if you put a level, uh, spirit level or the beam to check the change in level, you can see that there is a gap on the 
face which is just on top of the road surface. That means there is a difference in level between the bridge deck top and then the finished road level on the junction point where they meet each other. So this difference is creating a bump as soon as the vehicles uh, come in contact with the bridge abutment. So the impact of this uh, differential settlement uh, will have an abrupt uh, grade change uh, as they being connected uh, from the road surface to the bridge top or it causes a driver's discomfort because there will be a sudden jerk then it will have a driver's uh, impairing a driver's safety because the sudden jerk will always have the possibility to lose the control on the steering of by the driver and then the potential excessive impact on uh, traffic loading on the abutment like when uh, there will be a sudden jerk because of that and when the vehicles moving at a speed are approaching towards the bridge and at the junction where they touch the bridge deck and the existing road surface if there is a gap so the wake wheels are getting directly impacted on the bridge deck itself uh, creating excessive uh, traffic loading on the abutment of the bridge so the purpose of uh, an approach slab uh, if you see is to significantly reduce the local settlements which is uh, generally observed uh, during the construction phase accommodate global settlements by providing a gradual uh, transition between the roadways and the bridge decks keep the effects of uh, differential settlements within the tolerable limits is strictly a tool to control the severity of the bump approaching uh, the bridges uh, from the road surface. So the factors affecting the approach slab movements, if you see, improper compaction practices will lead to the settlement or the movement of the approach slab. Types of soils used for filling, uh, then the design of the approach slab, that is provision of drainage systems, uh, position of the approach slabs, like whether it is a the position is and at the top of the bridge surface or it is buried under the approach then the lateral movement out from beneath the roadways due to the improper design or the construction methods and the confinement of the soils in high embankment like whether it is being confined using a re panel or a return wall or a wing wall the compaction of soil for approach slab constructions, if you see, loose soils below the notch will give way the water to entering from the median to erode the soil. Because of this notch, the rollers are not being pushed till the end and the soil below the notch cannot be compacted properly. So the notch will have a loose joint between the soil and the concrete surface and any water entering from the top, if there is a way to enter from the top, it will be moving horizontally after getting in touch with the notch of the bridge structures and will lead to erosion of the soil along the cross section of the roads. The most common cause of embankment movements are a compression of uh, embankment soils, water intrusion uh, which is leading to induced compressions, local settlement that means there will be a subgrade failure maybe because of the lack of compaction or the poor soil being uh, utilized to fill the to fill as a subgrade soil uh, then the soil volume change due to change in the moisture content like if the soils are a little expansive in nature or if the liquid limit of the soil is uh, to a higher than the normal which is generally being used then the volume changes will lead to the change in the levels of the approach slabs then the construction methodologies which is being adopted uh, to construct the pavement primary compressions of uh, foundation soils then the secondary compression of foundation soils and then finally erosion and lateral spreading of uh, embankment materials figure shows uh, the possible causes of uh, approach slabs uh, settlements uh, because of uh, number of uh, reasons uh, but in the figure if you see the left hand side shows the bridge deck or uh, the top of the structure and the right hand side shows uh, the top of the road and the joint or the intersection of these two points uh, will give you the indication that there is a start of the approach slab towards the road 
sections. Now, just below the uh, junction, if you see, there is a gap, void development due to the erosion from the water flow and the compaction of the traffic loads. So, the possible movement of uh, the approach slab uh, could be because of the loss of embankment materials or soil movement of uh, the embankment slope itself. There will be a lateral squeeze due to the lateral stress of the embankment placements or the use of a collapsible soil just below the approach slab, compression of natural soil due to the embankment load itself, or a thermal movement of a bridge in general and the internal bridges in particular, small settlements of abutments, which is generally due to the design aspects, or the use of expansive soil just below the approach slab or improperly designed support slab, sleeper support slab, which is being used to support the approach on the edge of the roads or the compression of the embankments due to the insufficient compaction of incorrect material specifications being used for constructing the earthwork in the road sections. So the construction method, if you see the compression of the embankment soils, as you, as you can see that in the diagram, because of the projection of a V-notch, which is generally a base for the approach slab because uh, the approach slab will come and sit on top of this notch. Uh, so the just below this approach slab notch, you will not have any provisions to compact the soil because there is no space to move cl much closer to the soil. So the type of soil which is being used and the type of uh, compaction which is generally being used to compact the soil will have a major role to play as far as compression of soil is concerned. So the best way is to put the water as much as possible so that uh, consolidation and uh, compression will be achieved to the maximum. Then uh, construction methodologies like uh, medians, if you are not being covered, the median portion, uh, if there is a gap in the median portion, then the cavities formed in the median will lead to the movement or the entry of the water from the median as shown in the photograph. Uh, and uh, this entry point, uh, Will ultimately lead to the extreme, uh, ex uh, will ultimately lead to the uh, exit of the, the water through the median portions. And under the heading of uh, construction methodology, if you see that incomplete curb terminations during the construction phase enhances the catchment areas, thereby forcing the extra water to discharge from the weakest section of the road, uh, which is under construction and ultimately leading to the erosion of the sloping soils. Then uh, the construction of wing walls, like because of the wing walls, the sloping portion, the soil is being poorly compacted in the sloping portion of the wing walls, which helps in erosion of soil, creating a cavity below the approach slabs. Wing walls increases the chances of uh, approach slab settlements as compared to the return wall, because the wing walls are sloping away from the cross sections of the road, uh, which is uh, almost acting as a, an open end for the sloping portion of the soil, which is being placed on top of uh, the cross sections and is a free end, which is free to erode and move out of the confined zones of the cross sections. So the poor uh, proper compaction till the toe line and uh, protection from the surface water will reduce the soil erosion, but because of the wing wall, uh, these areas are not being compacted properly and uh, because of the improper termination of the curves, the edges from the curves, uh, once the rain comes or the jet of water moves out of the, the curve portion, will lead to the major impact on the, on the sloping portion, which is already weak because of the poor uh, compaction or the improper compaction in the sloping ends and will ultimately lead to erosion of the soils. Erosion and uh, lateral spreading uh, of uh, soil will uh, be a major part uh, as far as uh, the settlement of the approach slab is concerned during the construction phase. So precautions has to be taken, uh, necessary precautions has to be taken to ensure that proper drainage system is first made before the onset of the monsoon so that uh, even if after uh, you do the complete uh, work as per the specification, but if you are allowing the water to move out of the sloping portions, then uh, if you are allowing the water to erode, 
the soil which is being placed and compacted then ultimately we are allowing the compression or the consolidation of the soil and settlement of apro slab which is which is uh, not unavoidable which is uh, unavoidable in nature so to summarize uh, this module we talked about the definition of approach slab the types of the approach slab settlement which is generally a global settlement or local settlement global settlement is generally a long term settlement basically being done because of the consolidation of the soils and the local settlement is because of the improper compaction of the soil and uh, immediate compression of the soil because of the different types of soils being utilized then the impact of uh, different settlements uh, on uh, the approach slab which is uh, creating a hump when it be when it is being touched to the bridge uh, deck systems and then the possible cause of uh, the approach slab settlements will are being discussed in details so the purpose of an approach slab is to minimize uh, the hump uh, between the bridge deck and the flexible pavements Uh, minimize the driver discomfort and improve the safety of uh, the person who is actually driving the vehicle on top of the flexible pavements or the rigid pavements thank you